Bhagavan Sri Satya Sai Baba presents to the world an example of universal love and truth. He stands forth as a beacon for a new age, instilling in all qualities of compassion, charity, service, and righteousness. He personally feeds, clothes, and houses the poor and underprivileged, inspiring a national and international effort to serve mankind. Because of his leadership, hundreds of thousands of devotees throughout the world engage themselves in programs designed to uplift humanity. These programs are carried forth without fundraising campaigns, but require the participants contribute their time and energies directly. The poor and underprivileged receive food, clothing, medical supplies, and housing. Cattle and farming equipment are supplied. Sanitary conditions are improved and new wells dug to improve the quality of life for villagers. Satya Sai Baba says, hands that serve are holier than lips that pray. His leadership in education is renovating modern teaching methods. His program of education and human values is sweeping India and gaining acceptance in other nations. This program integrates scholarship and morality. He has established colleges and a university, as well as schools of various levels throughout India. Satya Sai Baba says the future of India and the world is tied to a renaissance in education. By his examples and teachings, he instills hope, faith, and belief in God. He constantly speaks of the unity of life and that there is only one God and he is omnipresent. His life is his message. His message is his life. His life is an offering of love. And his message is one of truth. The followers of each religion call upon one God who is omnipresent to listen to their prayers, be they from any race or whatever language they speak. But it is the same God who confers happiness upon all mankind. The external rites and ceremonies laid down in each religion vary according to climate, geography, time, race, etc. However, the basic lesson each religion teaches is to suppress the assertive ego and to surrender to the sovereign will of God. The Lord is in you, and it is He that has prompted you to project Him into the outer world as this idol or that image to listen to your outpouring and give you peace. Without the inspiration, solace, and joy He confers from within, you would be raving mad. The picture placed before you, the flowers you place before it, the hymns you recite, the vows you impose on yourself, these are activities that cleanse and remove obstacles in the way of you becoming aware of the God within. I do not appreciate in the least distinctions between various appearances of God. I do not proclaim that this is important or the other is less important. Continue your worship of your chosen God along the lines already familiar to you. There is no need to change your chosen God and adopt a new one when you have seen me and heard me. Believe that all hearts are motivated by the one and only God, that all faiths glorify the one and only God, that all names and all languages and all forms man can conceive denote the one and only God. God does not exist separately for any particular nation. He exists for all individuals and all nations. He shows no partiality for any. All are my people, and I belong to all of you. Sweets are many, 
but sugar is one. Stars are many, but sky is one. Jewels are many, but gold is one. Bodies are many, but spirit is one. All are therefore children of God. The brotherhood of man under the fatherhood of God is the spiritual path you must follow. natural state is happiness and he cannot be blamed for craving that which is his own but man is making a serious mistake he believes that the happiness for which he seeks comes from objects which he can experience what is the remedy the remedy is to consider the truth that there is only one everlasting never failing happiness and that is God to drink of that ever flowing spring of happiness you must turn to yourself, to the divine, which however obscured is the resident of your heart, the subtle truth of your being. Man has been engaged in exploring the infinite secret of nature in this marvelous creation in all possible ways. But because of the vagaries of the mind, intellect, and ego, man has failed to understand the true eternal spiritual basis underlying everything in the universe and has locked himself in the pursuit of the external, phenomenal world as if it were the only reality. In the process, he has failed to realize his own true nature and has totally perverted his mind. Lost is a simple truth that everything is permeated by God and that the Lord dwells in the hearts of each one of us. Mankind is the combination of the divine and the physical thus explaining the human predicament. 
The body indulges in all actions, good and bad, but man is forgetting the sacredness and divinity of human life. Man is not able to differentiate between what is real and what is unreal, and is subjecting himself to endless suffering. In fact, the reason for all this suffering and misery man is facing today is because he is forgetting God and resorting to activities based on the physical body. Man is forgetting the very fact that he is the very embodiment of love. The ultimate goal for everyone is the same, and it is only one. The aim of all spiritual disciplines is the same, and one alone. All the paths laid down by different religions lead to the same goal. Paths may be different, but the goal is one. Whether it is the path of action, the path of devotion, or the path of wisdom, the goal is the same. The physical body is the instrument for all action. Also, the body enjoys or suffers the fruits of all action. One has to recognize the God in all. He should recognize the indwelling spirit in his body and should also realize the same spirit dwells in every being. Only by such understanding that the divine is omnipresent will man do no harm to anyone and will always love others and be helpful to everyone. Whomsoever you hurt, you hurt God. Whomsoever you honor, you are honoring God. The entire world is infused with divinity and also full of karma. What is karma? This creation itself is karma. The physical body which performs all action is also karma. You as a separate body is karma itself. Man is born in karma, grows in karma, and dies in karma. Karma itself is God for man. Karma is responsible for all the joys and sorrows of this world. Therefore, realize karma is intimately associated with the body and not different from the body. All actions performed by the body must be good because the evolution of life depends on the results of all actions performed by the body. If you sow a seed from a fruit-bearing tree, it will multiply into thousands of fruit-bearing trees. In this context, it is said, I am the seed in all beings. This means the Lord has assumed all the various forms in the universe. Those who see with a spiritual vision recognize the common divinity in all beings. But those who have external visions based on a body consciousness see differences and are caught up in endless troubles. Every human being should inquire about the nature of the human body, which has to perish in the spirit which is the permanent entity. The spirit is indestructible and not subject to birth and death. Whatever goes through the process of birth has to undergo death also. If there is no death, then there is no birth. Anything that is born has to die. Taking the spirit, which is free from birth and death, as its foundation, the human body comes into existence in this phenomenal world wearing a costume, and that costume undergoes the cycles of birth and death. If you have not understood the secret of this physical body, which is like a dummy doll with nine openings, when are you going to realize it? From an early age, one should recognize the transitory nature of the physical body. Don't take pride in your physical beauty, youth, and strength because old age is waiting. In the course of time, your vision will become weak, your skin will start wrinkling, and you will look like an old monkey. So realize this body is not permanent. If you analyze the situation carefully, you will realize that God himself, who is not bound by birth or death, is the resident of all the hearts of mankind. Thank you.
Sai Baba teaches, you must understand how the mind functions. The body is the vesture which the mind has assumed for its functioning and growth. The thoughts and experiences of many previous lives are imprinted on the mind. When the mind is filled with good thoughts, there is nothing beyond its reach. Thoughts give rise to action. Actions produce habits. Habits mold one's character and character decides one's destiny, for good or ill. Hence thoughts are the basis for one's misfortune or enjoyment of life. It is not the world that binds man. It has neither eyes to see or hands to hold. Man is a prisoner of his own thoughts and desires. In his attachment to the ephemeral and the perishable, man forgets is an innate divinity and does not realize that everything in the universe has come from the divine and cannot exist without the power of the divine. The mind is the cause of man's bondage as well as liberation. 
If you put a key into a lock and turn it one way, the lock opens. And if you turn it the other way, it closes. It is the same lock and key. The turning makes the difference. The heart is like the lock, the mind like the key. If you turn the mind toward the world, you have attachment and bondage. Turn it toward God and you experience liberation. Your minds are continuously absorbed in worldly matters. Because of this, you create bondage and lose your peace. Without the complete transformation of the mind, you can never achieve peace. One has, therefore, to raise consciousness beyond the mind to achieve self-realization. To gain the infinite universal spirit, the invited self must break out of the puny, finite little prison of individuality. Desire belongs to the senses, the brain, the mind. Once you become free of it, you will realize the self, spirit, consciousness, enlightenment, and become one with the cosmic power. Self-realization is God-realization. Therefore, man reaches God.
except to God. What is the reason for this? It is because the mind is full of thoughts, good and bad. Only when you have controlled your thoughts will you be in a fit condition to reach God. The nature of the mind is to think continuously and always. If the mind is occupied with other thoughts, it cannot concentrate on God. Without control of the mind, man cannot have peace, even for a moment. One who wishes to live a happy and peaceful life must exercise control over his senses. Man today has lost peace of mind because he has no control over his senses. As long as the mind is active, there can be no escape from sorrow. To the extent that the mind is under control, you can experience happiness. The mind of man is capable of extreme expansion but because of the senses, the mind has attractions for a variety of objects and persons. When these objects fill the mind, its expansive nature gets reduced. It is only when the attraction for these objects are reduced that the mind can achieve expansion. In the journey to the divine, man has to reduce progressively his desires, which are the cause of his difficulties. It is true that man cannot exist without desires but they should be within reasonable limits. There can be no happiness without control of desires. Desires are never ending. They have no limits. If you keep on increasing your desires, your restlessness of mind increases, and one day you will become a madman. If you go on inflating the balloon, at some point it will burst. One should set limits on the pursuit of wealth, power, and position. Otherwise, he will end up in misery. Don't bring self-destruction by prompting your egos. As a person's wealth increases, his ego also increases. As ego increases, man's bad tendencies also increase. Your body is like a water bubble. It may pop at any minute. You must be ready to die at any minute. Don't postpone your spiritual disciplines thinking you're going to live a long time. Human existence requires that every moment should be lived with actions taken because of a pure and sacred heart. Man has to realize human birth is not merely to enjoy worldly pleasures, but to realize the truth, the purity and everlasting nature of the love of God.
What is the goal that man has set for himself in life? The goal has to be the realization of the unity of the self with the universal soul. If mere living or even happy living were the goal, the soul could have been encased in the form of a bird or beast. The very fact that man is equipped with memory, mind, intelligence, discrimination, reasoning ability, desire to detach himself from the senses, etc., is an indication he is destined for some higher goal. There is one supreme truth in the world. Behind every visible thing, there is the invisible as its basis. Thus, behind the visible universe, there is the invisible divine power, which is its basis. Truth is the basis for everything, and that truth is God. You should offer your ego and selfishness at the altar of truth and surrender to the will of God. As a human being, you should desire, seek, and enjoy only one thing, and that is love of God. Once you have love of God, you will never indulge in bad actions. This is the secret of human birth. Love for God is devotion. Devotion is not something objective and concrete. It is an inner experience which springs from the heart. To one who has full faith in God, everything is God's grace only. There is no good or evil. The devotee of God welcomes everything equally. The devotee must look upon pain and pleasure alike as designed for his good. He should develop the sacred feeling that whatever happens, it is for his good. If your heart is filled with love of God, then only good feelings will come from your heart. Peace remains only with those persons with a purified heart, a heart that is full of the love of God. This peace is like a sweet nectar. If you want to enjoy this peace, you have to curb your desires and develop love of God. Install God in your heart and see God in the hearts of all living things. Thank you. 
love is a mysterious force which infuses everything. It permeates the whole creation, transcending rational thought or feeling, unifying the whole cosmos, creating unity and diversity. Because of my love for Sai Baba, I know the truth, that there is really only one reason for me existing, and that is to realize my divinity and learn to express it for all to see. Jesus Christ said, Know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Sai Baba is in my heart. He is the subtle truth of my being. But even more than that, I know he is in the hearts of all people. We must come to realize that God is the resident of each and every heart. My love for Sai Baba inspires in me the will to be a better person, to treat others equally, and to try to see the unity of life. His teachings are reflected on my mind because of my wish to draw nearer and nearer to him. I want his words to be written on my heart. The more I think of him, the more I feel peace within myself, a peace that transcends all understanding. He is enchanting, unique, and beautiful. I want to be with him, to know him, to be in his presence always. I feel my sins washed away as I see him in my heart. His holiness merges with me and glorifies me. I can only feel love and see love as I feel him in my heart. Oh, how I love him. Please, Lord, stay with me. Don't ever leave me. I want to taste his sweetness, see his glory, feel his presence and hear his truth. I want to be near and dear. I want to honor him and glorify him. I know his grace extends itself into my life. I know his love grows in me daily. I know the truth that Sai Baba is in my heart to stay and he will never go away. Whatever events shape my future are nothing but shadows and clouds. They are lost in time but the love for my Baba shall never die. Very, 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 very. 